Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing, man? It's Anelli here. Hey, what's going on, guys? How we doing, man? It's Anelli here. Today, we're talking about five things to focus on during batting practice that will really, really help improve your overall game. Okay, so this is in no particular order. The first thing we're going to start off with is driving the ball to the opposite field gap, okay? So the first thing, I'm not talking about just hitting the ball the other way, all right? So I don't want to just be here and just force the ball that way and just kind of slap it over there, ground balls the opposite field. No, I'm trying to drive the ball into the op opposite field gap. I'm trying to knock down the wall in the opposite field gap, okay? Now, when I do that, that's going to allow me to have really good swing direction. All right, I'm going to be behind the ball, but I'm going to have my barrel working from the inside out instead of from the outside in. And if I can drive a ball that way, the opposite way, I'm a righty, so if I can drive a ball the opposite way, well, that means I've got really good depth to my swing. I'm getting the bat in the zone early, right? I'm also, like I said, I have really good direction. And so when I'm covering the entire plate and I can drive it that way, well, then I can also hit a ball in. And I can also stay in an off-speed pitch pretty well. But if I've got poor direction and all I do in batting practice is I get around the ball, I attack from the outside in, I'm cutting across the zone and I'm hitting everything to my pull side and I'm rolling over, well, then I can't hit a ball away in a game and I probably will not be able to stay on an off-speed pitch. Okay, so really important, again, doesn't have to be every round, but there should be some portion of your batting practice dedicated to driving balls the other way, okay? I also, to do that, I've got to stay in really good posture, right? I can't just be here and come up off the ball. I can't just rotate and take my shoulders off the ball. I've got to stay behind the ball and drive it that way, all right? So really, really, really important. That's number one. Number two is doing some type of execution or barrel control during batting practice, okay? So that could be a bunch of different things. It can be a hit and run. It can be a man on second, move him over. It can be an infield in and I'm trying to drive a ball to the outfield. It can be an infield back where I'm trying to hit the ball in the middle of the field to score a run. Now, a couple reasons why this is important. Number one, these situations are going to come up in a game. And I know over the last year or two, if, you, if you're looking online, you're looking on YouTube, a lot of people will say, we're not, why try to ever move them over? Or why try to ever uh, do work on situations with a man on third? Let's just hit a home run, right? And so I think that is taking it to too far of an extreme. There's still plenty of situations in the game where I've got to be able to do a job. Now, is it great if we can just drive doubles and home runs all day long? Yeah, that's that's pretty cool, right? But I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, we're not going to be able to get up there every time and just say, hey, let's forget about all the small details of baseball and let's just drive homers all day long. There's going to be, again, situations where I've got to have some barrel control and I've got to do something with the ball, okay? And so there should be a, a portion of your batting practice dedicated to this. And maybe it's not every day, but there should be, again, a couple times a week, a portion of it dedicate to this. So not only does it help me in a game situation so that when I get up in the game and I have that situation, I've been there before and I can do it, but it also does work on having some barrel control and being able to deliver the barrel where I want to be able to deliver the barrel, barrel to. All right, so that's also really, really important. The other thing that it does for you is that it makes you get good pitches to hit, okay? So if I'm trying to move a runner over, I'm trying to hit behind the runner, well then it forces me to get a ball on the outer part of the plate to be able to do that job, right? If it's a man on third and I'm trying to drive something in the outfield, it forces me to get a ball up, okay? So it, it also works on our plate discipline, being able to get good pitches to hit, having an idea of what we're going after and what we're not, which is obviously a really good skill to have in the game. Okay, number three is driving the ball, hard contacts, gap to gap. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit more into game mode where I would say most of the time as a hitter, what, what we tell our hitters is we're trying to drive a ball with carry, a hard line drive, middle of the field, gap to gap. Okay, and when I do that, it does a bunch of really good things for me. First of all, it gets me on time for most pitches because if I'm going to drive it to the middle of the field, then I've got to get, I, 
I'm able to get on time for a fastball, but it still allows me to be on time, maybe not perfectly every time, but it allows me to, to be on time if something is a little bit faster or a little bit slower than I think. Whereas if I'm always just trying to hit a ball, let's say to left field as a right, I'm trying to drive everything to left field. Well, now I might be on time for that fastball, but it makes it difficult if the ball's any slower than that to really be on time, okay? And the same thing if I'm just trying to hit everything that way, well then if the ball's a little bit faster than I think, it's really difficult to do that. So we, walk, we work on line drives, hard line drives with carry, gap to gap. It also forces the hitter to work on being on path. So the only way to really be able to drive a ball there and, and have some good spin on the ball and be able to have some carry is that I've got to get the barrel behind the ball early, I've got to get in the zone deep, and I've got to be able to stay on the ball. Obviously all good things mechanically what we're trying to do. Okay, number four is pulling the ball in the air, okay? Now again, this is one of those things where some coaches are like, yeah, let's practice this all day long, just everything's gotta be pulled in the air. There's other coaches that see you pull the ball in the air, and they're like, oh no, ground ball's to second base, let's go. So, so again, I'm not saying that you've gotta work on this every single round, you shouldn't work on this every single round. But, as you get to pretty high levels of baseball, the most valuable ball, batted ball, is the pulled ball in the air, okay? Especially as you get really high in base. We play in the major leagues, the most valuable ball is a pulled ball in the air, because it's a home run, and home runs are really, really valuable, and you're gonna get paid millions and millions of dollars if you can hit a bunch of them, okay? Now, I'm not saying to work on this every single time, but there is some value in practicing it, because as I said, that is a very valuable ball, and so I should be practicing how do I get the ball in the air to the pull side, right? How? If I want to be able to pull the ball in the air, I've got to do some really good things with my swing, okay? If I can't pull the ball in the air, if everything I hit is topspun, right, or everything I hit gets filleted to the opposite field, well then there's issues in my swing. I've got poor direction, I don't have a good path, and so I've got to work on driving the ball in the air to my pull side. Again, not every single round, but it should be part of the plan and whether it's one round or whether it's every couple of days we really work on it, it should be mixed in there. The last thing is competition, okay? So the game is all about competition, right? And so we're trying to make practice similar to the game. And if we can, we want to make practice harder than the game. And one way to do it is have some competition, right? It's going to bring some pressure into it where, again, Practice oftentimes is so far from the game that there's plenty of players that do pretty well in practice and then all of a sudden the game starts and it, it becomes tougher, there's more pressure, there's something on the line now and certain players just can't handle it. They don't practice it enough. So what we do every single day at our practice for one round, typically just one round, sometimes we'll do more, sometimes we grade the entire batting practice and we compete the entire time, but if we're not doing that, we at least have one round where we're having a competition, okay? And the winner will get something, typically, okay? And so you can do this any way you want. We'll have hard contact rounds where it's just count the number of hard contacts. Maybe it's a situational round. Maybe it's a man on second, you gotta drive him in round. It can be anything, you can make up anything. But there should be some type of competition where score is being kept, just like the game, and you make the players compete with each other and you give the winner something or you give the losers, you make them do something, okay? But again, that's more realistic and more like the game. And not that every round has to be like that because there are certain rounds where we wanna work on things, okay? But there should be some type of competition going on. So hopefully those five things, if you do those five things, or at least do a couple of them, I think your batting practice will be much, much better. I think you'll get much more out of it, and hopefully over the long run, doing it enough, you're going to really improve as a hitter. So let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff, and we'll talk to you later.